Hi, John Valvano here, and I'd like to talk about ARM Architecture Procedure Call Standard. Now, you will notice that not all code that we have previously shown to you in EE 319K and H has been compliant according to this standard. But we'll see why it's important, and uh, going forward, you will find that uh, most of the code will be compliant to this standard. So what is it? Okay, it's a standard. ARM Architecture Procedure Call Standard. It's a standard about how one function passes data to another function. That's a call standard. And the reason it's important, because on your system, you may have code uh, generated by multiple compilers. And in order for that code to interact with each other, there must be a standard of how the parameters are passed and returned. The other way it is important is here in 319K and H, is we will write code that's a combination of C and assembly. Lab 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And so when a C call function calls an assembly function, or when an assembly function calls a C function, we have to comply to this standard. How it actually applies to you and most immediately is in the first exam. Uh, you will write assembly code, and uh, we have written a grader in C, and our grader calls your assembly code. And so this exam will be compliant according to this standard. Okay. That's why it's important. What is it? Well, it's a set of rules. It's a way of living, okay? And so, you know, we're going to pass parameters. So if you have one parameter, it goes in R0. If you have two parameters, it goes in R0 and R1. If it's got three parameters, R0, R1, and R2. And if it's got four, it uses R3. Now, if you have more than five, you know, if you have five or more parameters, they're going to go on the stack. Now, luckily for you, in this particular class, we won't be so weird as to make functions that you have to write in assembly with five or more parameters. But if there are, they go on the stack. Okay. Now, you know C has a single parameter or no parameters. It has at most one return parameter. So that parameter, if it exists, is going to be returned in R0. Okay. So that's how we pass data in and how we data uh, pass data out. That's a call standard. The other thing has to do with registers. Okay, so there's a bunch of registers. If I put something interesting in one of the registers and I call your function, we have to agree on whether or not who, uh, you will preserve the my cool value in that register. And so we're going to divide the registers into two categories. R0, 1, 2, 3, and 12 are called freely usable, okay? So if you want to use one of those five registers, go ahead and use it. You don't have to push it on the stack and restore its value at the end of your function. On the other hand, okay, 4 through 11 are, are in a different category. Now, you can use R4 through R11. You can use it but you must save it at the beginning of the function, use it, use it, use it, and then at the end, you pop it back off right before you return uh, from that subroutine. In that way, uh, those registers are preserved. Now, one more rule. Now, and don't ask me why. It's a weird one. And that is, if you wish to push on the stack, you will push and pop an even number of registers, and that makes the stack 8-byte aligned. Uh, it's a rule. Just follow it. Don't get too excited about that rule. Okay. Now, there's one more thing you got to remember. It's not actually an ARM architecture procedure call standard rule. It's really a survival rule, and that is if one function calls another function, uh, then please save and restore the, the link register. Okay. All right, so what I want to do is to show you the context of ARM architecture procedure call standard uh, as you do your first exam. So here's a typical exam one question that you write in assembly language, okay? And notice that these, there's a single input parameter, okay? And it is in R0. Now, in this particular function, it's a number, a value. So that's a call by value. And that value is in R0. Okay? And in this particular function, there is a single return parameter. And it's also in R0. That's the standard. One parameter passed in R0, one parameter returned, returned in R0. Now, if I want to use uh, uh, two, three, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 12, I can freely use them. Okay? So let's ask some questions. Okay? Uh, at the beginning of the function, 
Okay, right at the beginning, what's in R0? And this is a classic mistake that people make in the exam. They don't know where the inputs are, okay? And so in R0 is a number, you know? It might be minus nine, it might be minus eight, it might be minus seven, it might be seven, eight, or nine, you know, it's a number, and it's in R0. Where do I look for it? It's in R0. Put a breakpoint and look at it for yourself, okay? Because that is a rule. One parameter is in R0. Okay. Now, similarly, at the end of the function, right before I do a BXLR, what should you put into R0? And that's the answer. You should put the result. Okay. Whatever, you know, whatever the result. It's either a 0, a 0, or this function. That's what you're going to return back as R0. Let's ask another question. What if I want to use R1, or 2, or 3, or 12? Okay, just use them, okay? Don't worry about saving and restoring them. Uh, we can freely use R1, 2, 3, uh, and 12 without saving and restoring. On the other hand, what if I want to use R4 and 5, okay? Or R4, 5, and 6, or R4, 5, 6, and 7 uh, in that protected range? Well, you can use them. Okay, you can use R4 through R7. You can use them. It's all right. They're yours. You can use them. But you have to save them uh, at the beginning and restore them at the end. Okay, that's a rule. R4 through R7 have to be restored. Okay, and if you don't follow that rule, the grader crashes and nobody gets any points. Okay. What if I want to use just R4? Now, that's the weird rule. You remember, if you want to push, you're going to push them in pairs. So if I want to just use R4, I got to push R4 and pop it off. But in order to survive the rule, I'm just going to pick another register and push it as well. Okay, and again, I'm going to pop it in order to balance. Okay, uh, let's do a little more complicated example. This is my last example here, uh, just to illustrate that, again, if there is a single parameter, it's in R0. The example we just did, R0 was a call by value. And in this case, this is a call by reference, because there's a pointer there. Okay, And again, the most classic mistake people make on this exam is not figuring out how the parameter is passed. It's a pointer. It's a pointer to an array. Okay. Now it happens to be a variable size array, uh, and that's the number of elements, and each one is two bytes. Okay. But the pointer R0 is pointing to the first element. Okay. That's how the parameter is passed. Okay. The second is R0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this case here, R1 is going to be a 6, telling me that there are six elements in this array. Okay. And so if you zoom into this instruction here, you can see how R0 is being used. Again, R0 is a pointer into the array. Then I'm going to fetch a 16-bit sign number. And then when I'm done fetching it, I'm going to uh, increment the pointer to the next element by adding two. And if you want to learn more about arrays, watch the Yerobali lecture on arrays. Okay. And then at the end, remember the rule, at the end, I'm going to return the result through R0. So right here at the end, before I return, I put whatever result is, here's the sum, right? There's the sum happening. I'm going to return that through R0. And so it, R0 has the result. And as we also mentioned, uh, since I wanted to use R4 and R5, I saved them and restored them. Okay, so in summary, uh, it allows your code to work with others. The rules are <clears throat> the first four parameters are in the first four registers. If you got one, it's in R0, and if you got two, it's in R0 and R1. Uh, remember, parameters can be a number, we call that call by value, or it could be a pointer, we call that call by reference. And either way, those numbers or pointers are in these registers. Uh, if there's more than four, the rest of the parameters would go on the stack. Um, and then the output parameter, if it does exist, is going to be returned in R0. And again, if you want to use 0, 1, 2, 3, 
or 12, you may use it without saving. But if you want to use R4 through R11, please save and restore. And then the last rule is as you push and pop going forward, we're going to push and pop an even number of registers. It turns out it makes the code go faster, even though uh, it seems like it wouldn't. All right, so that's the summary of this. Uh, we're going to use this standard throughout the rest of the semester. Uh, enjoy this class.